Have you heard of Dragon Savers? Dragon Savers. No. Have you heard of Dragon Savers? No. Have you heard of Dragon Savers? Yes. You have? I think. Brilliant. Okay. What's your understanding of Dragon Savers? Is that like across the road? It is across the road. Do you know yeah. what it does? Send money to people. Yeah. That's about all I know. Are you familiar with credit unions? No. Do you know what a credit union is? No. Do you know when it gives you money and you've got to like pay it back in a certain amount of time? Are you interested in that? Have you got any debt? Oh, well, everybody got debt. Well, a few years ago now, I borrowed a thousand pound. You got to pay like eight hundred pound interest. Does that to you? Yeah, years ago now. What's your opinion of banks in general? Uh, they are thieves. Really? And layers. Oh yes. This is Triorki in the South Welsh Valleys. We've come here at the suggestion of a few people who posted on an anywhere but Westminster thread to look at a story which involves a lot of things politicians talk about. The cooperative model, mutualism, community self-help. It's also a story about debt, the big banks and payday lenders. And it's all focused on the local credit union, Dragon Savers. And here it is. Hi, I'm John Harris from The Guardian, here to see Christina. How does it work? What's a credit union there to do, this credit union? It's a very simple organisation and it's there to provide people somewhere safe to save and somewhere um, easy, convenient and low cost to borrow some money if they want to. And that's the whole idea. I mean, credit unions all over the world are small, big, offer lots of different services, but at their heart, at their core, every single credit union will have started with savings and loans. That's what they do. You can see on the desk that I've got loan applications waiting now, you know, for you know, for me to have a look at them and and see. But uh, and and that decision could be life changing for them and that's my decision to make. So it does weigh, you know, very very heavily on me. We don't use um, computer systems per se to make that decision for us. You know, we will credit check people and we'll use the score, we'll use the information we get from that. Um, but at the end of the day it's it's always a personal decision and, and you have to stand by it as a loans officer. What does it feel like turning people down? Awful. Christmas is a nightmare. I hate Christmas. I absolutely hate it. People tell me I ruin Christmas. And I don't ruin Christmas. Money ruins Christmas. But uh, no, I, I really, really don't like it because, you know, they wouldn't have applied if they didn't need it. There are millions of people who, from time to time, need to borrow a few hundred quid. Mm. And banks and building societies now are just not in the business of doing that. But where can they go? So you can look on the internet and find plenty of places to go and pay through the nose for it. But if people just joined the you know, local credit union, they might not think they have a need for it now, but they don't know what's around the corner. You know, what about in six months' time? What about in a year? We're about to arrive further down the valley in Tonna Revel, where there's another branch of Dragon Savers and someone who's got direct experience of those really nitty gritty issues in people's lives that credit unions deal with. I moved up here because of a problem with my boyfriend at the time, with my daughter, and uh, when I moved into my first property with her, um, it was just, I was a single parent, and we found that we couldn't cope on the money that we had. When you've got someone coming up to you and waving cash in front of you and say, look, look, you can have this now, and you've got a child and you think, yeah, I'd, I'd like to give them something nice. So we carried on until one day I realised I was just getting into so much trouble, I was drowning. And I didn't have one loan, I had three in the end. And how much were you in debt at that point? Uh, roughly about three and a half thousand pounds. Oh. That was just what I owed then, this wasn't the interest. The interest on top was astronomical. So, including interest, how much were they demanding from you? Um, around about £6,000 at the end of it, I had to pay back. And okay. that was really bad. And you were living on benefits, right? I was on benefits at the time, right. yes. So, I mean, that absolutely dwarfed your weekly yeah. comings well, and goings. Yeah, I'd give them the money. I'd have enough money just to cover my um, gas and electric and put a bit of food in my cupboards and that was it. And we think of these, don't we? I mean, these aren't loan sharks. This is not a fellow who lives on the end of the street. These oh, are big no. companies. Yes. We're talking about Provident here. They Provident were the, and um, Shopper Check, yeah. Shopper Check. Yes. The, they were the two that, that lent yep. you money. Yeah, that's right. And I as your debt was building up, they weren't... It seems odd, really, because, I mean, that's money 
you owe them. I mean, they're yeah. almost getting themselves in trouble. But they were just offering you more and more debt, despite yeah. the fact that you were that, that thousands and thousands of pounds of owed money was piling up. They were still yeah. offering you more. Well, because they knew that I'll pay it anyway. Because I'm not the person not to pay my bills. If a bill comes along, I pay it. So I would leave myself short just to pay them. So and they knew this. So they would try and reason with me and make me feel that it was my idea that to borrow the money would be a good idea because I could cover everything I needed, but it didn't work out that way. How do you turn it round? What happened? Um, I started saving with a credit union that was in a small building up in the uh, Capital Farm site on the other side, and they were so wonderful. They made me understand about debt. They made me realise that you know, even though you might want the money now, it's a good idea to save it first, because the pride you feel when you pay cash and you don't owe anybody back that cash, is so astronomical, it's unreal. So this whole sort of netherworld of debt problems and dealing with these very unpleasant people, probably, I mean, it defined your life by the sound of it for what, about 20 years, 25 oh, yeah. years? Oh yeah, I can only say in the last 15, 15, 17 years, my life has got so much better when it comes to money. I mean, you've still not got enough. I mean, that's the way of the world, but I can cope with my money now, I save, whenever I can, I mean, I get all my benefits paid in here. They sort all my um, bills out and everything like that, what they can do in here. And what's in my share too, I know is mine and I can spend it. One of the most basic points in all this is that credit unions behave with a lot more responsibility and discipline than big banks and plenty of other companies that provide financial services. And credit unions also encourage responsibility and discipline among the people who actually use them. Another really important point is that in terms of the way that it helps people, Dragon Saver's influence seems to run through communities here like blood running through veins. Right, we're now two or three miles further down the Ron the Valley. A careers exhibition staged by public sector and voluntary organisations where we're told we're going to find some happy credit union customers who will talk to us about how organisations like Dragon Savers are really keeping their communities alive. When you dial 999, Control put the call through to us and then we've got eight minutes to get to your house to come and help you. Okay. And you're locally based? We're locally based. How many volunteers are first responders in your outfit? We have nine. Nine fully trained, multidisciplined responders. And is it important to, to be putting your money in a credit union rather than a bank? Definitely. Why? Wow. Because it is so easy for us to have access to it. It's local people who are running it and um, we all know each other. It's, it's a very friendly organisation. If there's any problems, we, all we have to do is to ring them up or we can go on the internet, we can contact them and, and problems are sorted out. Right. And what would happen if your money was in a bank, do you think? Uh, I don't think a bank would look at us, really, because <laughs> we haven't got very much money. And they certainly wouldn't consider us for loans and that sort of thing, which the credit union will do. Gilbert Gore has got two cash points, which are cash point machines that we charge for but they've got no banks, nothing at all. So having the credit union in the community centre makes it a focal point and it obviously nets more accounts. People can come in there as opposed to a three mile journey down to Tonrevel from the top of Gilvac to take money out or do transactions. Yeah. The place you mentioned, if it were in a wealthier part of the country, it might have at least one branch of a bank. Yeah, yeah, it's but just... unfortunately it hasn't. It doesn't have very much at all. It's no? financially excluded, isn't it? It's financially excluded, yes. And where is Gilvacoch? From here, about eight miles. Okay. Eight yeah. miles from here, heading Sounds towards like Bridgend. Go. Nice to see you've got a stereophonics tribute band playing it. The, the monophonics. monophonics. They're pretty good, actually. Are they? Well, I mean, if you're half as good as the stereophonics. That's, that's not that good, is it? No, it really isn't. <laughs> so, James, you yeah. uh, work at the community centre just there. I do. Here yeah. in Gilvacoch. Mm -hmm. Um, and there's a credit union outlet, a Dragon Savers outlet there. That's right, yeah. But the story is integrally bound up with this, which until fairly recently was a branch of the Halifax. So what happened? I don't suppose it was busy enough or they felt like there wasn't enough people to serve, I guess, in the Halifax and it sure. And how did that feed in then to a, a credit union service becoming available at the community centre? Well, in the past we've tried to set up a community-based um, credit union in Gilvac and it hasn't really worked. But um, I think it was in January 2010, um, myself and my colleague Joe set up the credit union and it's been really popular ever since. Um, 
we've got over 70 members now, which may not seem like a, a lot, but if you think of the demographics, maybe it's a fair amount of people who regularly save. It's not just a long-term saving thing. Um, the parents will sign up to save for the kids for holidays, potentially, or school uniforms, anything. A small amount of as money. Basic, as, as basic as that sometimes. Really is as bad as What that, other people yeah. might think of slightly better off people would think of as being just basic essentials yeah. they're saving for. For school uniforms and Christmas presents even, yeah. If you look at the demographics around here, I'd say it's a fairly impoverished area. Although it's a lovely area and the people are, you know, great opportunities quite, aren't there, I suppose, in some ways. And the opportunity to save possibly isn't there, that people who live in a city and have access to better jobs, better employment and more resources for, you know, building your savings. And people haven't got that chance here so much. So if the credit union wasn't here? Well, it's the only obvious way to save money. If I was a young person going to our community centre, either using our facilities or going to the creche or, or whatever, going to a course, playing football, at least they can visibly see an opportunity to save rather than having to go into Tonnerevel to the bank. I know it's only a few miles, but if you haven't got a car and you can't afford to travel on the transport, then you are isolated, aren't you? Whose fault ultimately do you think it was that you got in the mess that you got in? Well, <sighs> My situation isn't like most because I spent most of my life in care and you don't get taught about bills and you don't get taught about what happens when, you know, you don't, about council tax and rent and things like that. So, I mean, I could easily turn around and say it's everybody else's fault but mine, but at the end of the day it's my fault. It's my responsibility to pay my bills and it's my responsibility to know what comes in and help the house. But if someone isn't taught about it, if people are unaware of things that they can, benefits they can get or you know, where they stand, then it's easy to fall into a big pit and never get yourself back out again. There are things we now take for granted about money and where it sits in society and people's lives. Massive levels of personal debt, historically low levels of saving, and millions of people who seem to fall between, on the one hand, big in personal international corporations, and the kind of payday lenders and doorstep lenders who charge people ruinous rates of interest. Now in places like this, credit unions slowly are offering people something different, which means that where it's sorely needed, there is an alternative.